More than 50 Conservative MPs have signed an amendment to abolish uh, mandatory housing targets. Now, that, of course, could tear up Boris Johnson's manifesto commitments to build 300,000 new houses a year to help ease the housing crisis. Last year, they managed not much more than half of that, with just over 175,000 new builds in England. Well, we're joined now by Theresa Villiers, a Conservative MP behind the amendment. Good to have you on the programme. So, what's the idea for the amendment, first of all? The amendment is to return local control over planning decisions um, to local communities. These targets, I think, are based on 2014 out-of-date population figures. They're disproportionately um, pushing for delivery in the crowded southeast. And to meet those targets uh, in the southeast, there's a danger that we essentially risk making the same mistakes as the 60s and 70s with high-rise, high-density blocks, greenfield development, all of which would be damaging to our environment and the quality of life of many people. The government's now set to pull the votes completely tomorrow. Do you see that as a victory? I think it is an important victory, and I really welcome the government's decision on that because they were sending a clear signal that they wanted to look at these issues again, and the Secretary of State has subsequently been out on the airway saying... He really understands our concerns and he wants to, to try and provide some reassurance. So I hope that does happen. And have you been talking to ministers to get the reassurance that you want? Oh, again and again and again over, over a period of years. And, and that will obviously continue because, I mean, we can't continue as we are. I and many of my colleagues have felt like our constituencies are under siege. Of course, we need new homes, but they need to be the right homes in the right places and they need to be supported by appropriate infrastructure. So in your conversations, have you seen a shift more recently then in the government's attitude on this, do you think? Well, in his public comments, the Secretary of State has, has repeatedly said that, you know, things do have to change and there needs to be a response to these backbench okay. concerns. It remains to be seen what that response will be. I hope, I hope we do see some serious change because I, I am gravely concerned about the impact on the environment of these targets and how they're operating at the moment. You've obviously got concerns about the environment, concerns about constituencies like your own, but I just want to read to you from the last manifesto, you know, the manifesto that you stood on. We will continue our progress towards our target of 300,000 homes a year by the mid-2020s. This will see us build at least a million more homes of all tenures over the next parliament in the areas that really need them. Now, you know, as I said in the introduction, you know, last year there was just over 175,000 new houses built in England. That's not much more than half the target. You've got to do something about this, haven't you? Well, removing mandatory targets won't mean that house building grinds to a halt. The actually local councils it might were doing encourage fairly them well to actually do before something. the introduction of mandatory targets. I mean, we, we just have to look, for example, at the experience of local plans, which are in local neighbourhood plans, where you give communities in a relatively small area more control and power and responsibility over home building. And, in those instances, they've really stepped up. Local decision-making, taking communities with you, is a way to deliver new homes. We also need to see homes being much more central to the government's regeneration of, of towns and cities around the Midlands and the North. They can be a positive part of levelling up, whilst at the same time taking the pressure off some of the hotspots across the rest of the country, particularly the South and London. Come on. You can't really expect us to believe that, you know, local uh, residents can be like, yep, let's have loads more homes in our communities. That's not how it works. You know, in, in many instances, of course, local residents will accept new homes, but it, they have to be supported by appropriate infrastructure. And, and it's, not, um, it's not acceptable where these, where these new homes cause significant environmental damage. We need to get a better balance and a fairer distribution of new homes across different parts of the country. You know, there's so many young people who are struggling to get on the housing ladder. You know, rental prices are soaring. What reason are you giving those young people to vote Conservative? Because the Conservatives are the party that can be trusted on the economy, because we're going to get taxes down. And yes, because we're going to help more people on the housing ladder. We will continue to deliver new homes. That That is absolutely the right thing to do. And removing mandatory, not centrally set, top-down targets is, is not going to stop that. It just means that we'll need to take communities with us in terms of housing delivery. So housing is something which is done with the consent of local communities, not done to them. 
I just want to read you a quote by Sajid Javid, who's written in today's Sunday Times. Uh, he says he's dismayed by your amendment and he says it would put meaningful policy into reverse. We risk creating a generation that turns its back on the politicians who failed them, a generation that without any capital of its own becomes resentful of capitalism and capitalists. Has he got a point? Uh, I, I disagree with, with Sajid's approach. I, I think you know, future generations won't thank us if we destroy the environment in, in the cause of building new homes. We can deliver new homes. We can do it in a sustainable way with the consent of local communities. And uh, I think the better way to do that is to remove these top-down targets and give more power agency and responsibility to local communities. Uh, at the minute, it feels like the attack line uh, that Keir Starmer is using again and again on Rishi Sunak is that he's weak. He says it pretty much every Prime Minister's question. If he's pulling legislation because he can't get his own uh, backbenchers like yourself to support it, doesn't that just play into Labour's hands? I, I don't believe it does. I think the postponement of the vote that was due to happen tomorrow is a sensible decision. It demonstrates a Prime Minister and Ministers who are willing to listen to the concerns of backbenchers made on behalf of our constituents. Uh, and just finally, uh, while I've got you, uh, Matt Hancock is going to be, is in the final of I'm a Celebrity. Do you want to see him win? Well, I, I think it would be great if he won. I have to say, when it first started, I found it very difficult to watch, but he's done fantastically well. I've certainly been voting for him and I wish him well with a final. <laughs> oh, great, I love it. Then we've got so, a bit of an insight into who's voting for Matt Hancock. Why did you find it difficult to watch at the beginning? Well, I, I mean, I suppose it's a fairly sort of excruciating sort of thing to see people people go through. Buried alive or gunged or yeah, made to eat various parts of animals' anatomies. But he, he's, he showed incredible resilience and bravery going through those those tasks and people can, can see him for the... You know the, the the engaging and you know and 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 sort of a great human being that he is. Okay, thank you very much for being uh, on the program today, Theresa Villiers. Uh, there.